I've been to four live shows in my time. Wicked in 2023, Patch Art in 2023, Patch Art in 2015, legend, and the topic of this video, Thomas and Friends, the All Aboard Live Tour. This was a live stage arena show shown in Northern Ireland, the UK and Japan in the early 2000s. Thanks to Southern Steamer, you've probably heard of this show before, but not many people in the fandom have seen the show when it was actually around. Three times? Well, our friendship was fun while it lasted. So, just a casual 19 years later after seeing it myself in Belfast Odyssey Arena, here's a retelling of the show's story and a few extra details later on that I want to discuss. Let's go. We start off with a musical, where the human characters break into song and start shouting, singing and dancing around, which happens a lot across the show. And in Wales. <laughs> characters, usually Sir Topham Hatt, will occasionally talk to the audience to get their help in shouting for stuff. I think we'll have to try that again. After three, everybody! One, two, three! Percy and James get separate introductions amongst the opening songs, and are immediately sidelined for the rest of Act 1 because of Thomas. Yeah, Thomas gets the biggest introduction out of anyone and gets the entire first act to himself. Bastard. The whistle! It's broken! Broken? Cinders and ashes. I can't work without my whistle. He gets the idea to replace it with a school bell, and between that and pulling the express for Gordon, gets really happy and starts ringing the bell constantly. This causes Topham to scold Thomas for being annoying, which is probably the most relatable moment in the entire show for me. This makes Thomas feel extremely depressed. In fact, he gets so depressed he sings a song about it, doing so years before his Moby duet with Ashima. I try so hard to be on time, but I'm not a useful engine anymore. Afterwards, Thomas then sees smoke coming from Skinner's oven and Topham's office. The audience urges him to reuse his bell instead of letting Topham burn to death, and good thing too, as Topham had accidentally set his tea cakes on fire. Thanks to Thomas, no one was hurt. Thomas is praised, and Act 1 ends. After a break, the show remembers that James, Percy and Gordon exist, and the four engines talk about the day's events, during which time Gordon teases Percy for being scared of ghosts. Topham tells the engines that a big parade is coming, and gives the engines special jobs. During this time, James loses his special load on a tunnel, and Percy, hearing noises within said tunnel, freaks out and crashes. Well, doesn't really crash, he, he knocks the buffers over, but it's played out like a duel. Oh dear, Thomas <laughs> Thomas, decked out with bunting at this point, goes to find Percy. He finds him, but isn't strong enough to pull him back onto the track. They then hear strange noises from inside the tunnel again, which turned out to be an elephant, which was James's missing cargo. Together, Thomas with the elephant rerail Percy, and the day is saved. They find the elephant's baby in the tunnel as well, and together everyone celebrates the big parade, ending the show off with songs and fireworks. You might have noticed a few strange things in my synopsis and pictures from the last few minutes. Well, I'm here to explain some of these things, starting with... Yeah, you might have noticed, Gordon never came out of the shed during the show. Why was this? Well, turns out they never made a full model of him. I mean, it makes sense, because James's prop could barely fit around the tight corners, so there was no way a larger character like Gordon could. My only question to this day is, why did they have Gordon in it at all then? He doesn't really add much to the story, like he gets sick and teases Percy. That's it. The main trio carried the show just fine. Not really a complaint, just something I never really understood. You might have also noticed that Harold, Jack and the Troublesome Trucks do not also appear in the show. Because it turns out there was two versions of the show. The All of Our Live Tour that I've just discussed, and the Big Live Tour, which featured a slightly bigger set with Station and Footbridge, Harold, Jack, the Trucks, and a completely different story which can be read on the wiki. Unfortunately, unlike the All of Our Live Tour, there was no full version of the Big Live Tour ever filmed, apart from random promo footage. By 2007, the show wrapped up once the props returned back from Japan, and the last public appearance of any of the props was Thomas's, which was brought to Buckingham Palace for the Queen's birthday, and it wasn't until recent times until we got news on the props' whereabouts. 
In short, Thomas was scrapped, James, Percy and a coach reside in Southampton at a recycling plant, while Gordon, Jack, Harold and James's tender in recent times were spotted in Greenham Nuclear. It's no doubt a sad ending for all the props, having spent years entertaining parents and children, winning a Guinness World Record, meeting the Queen, travelling to Japan, only to rot away and be forgotten to the cruel hardships of the Earth's elements, lack of care from humanity as they slowly wither away to the cruel fate of time. Come here to me. I hate you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey, if it was up to me, I'd have Percy's prop in my garden to assert dominance over my Percyless neighbours. <laughs> Depressing note aside, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd like to give a thanks to the following trio Sarah Parrish for her upload, aka the only way to ever rewatch the entire show, and of course, Southern Steamer. Southern Steamer has a Twitter account, YouTube channel, and Google Drive have compiled all the photos and videos that exist regarding the show. This seven minute probe especially is really worth checking out, I think. And it's pulled around and stretched and that's what gives us the different expressions. Thanks very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>